All right, guys, so the first thing I want to hit on today is uh, some uh, boat uh, registration. Uh, well, we get a lot of questions about registrations, especially right now with the coronavirus going on. So you have a 90-day extension on your boat registration this year. So now your registrations will expire in July or, yes, that's correct, July 31st. So uh, you're good right now. So just remember when July 31st rolls around that you get to get your registrations renewed. Um, while we're talking about registrations, I'd like to talk about uh, how you actually put your registration on your boats because we get a lot of questions about that as well. Um, obviously on this boat, there is no registration because it's a state-owned boat. But um, if you do have a new boat or an old boat that has worn out numbers and you want to put new uh, letters and numbers on there, there are a few restrictions that you should know about. Uh, first, your numbers and letters should be on the front part of your boat. And on this boat, somewhere in this general area, would be a great spot to put your registration ID. Um, your registration needs to be read from left to right. So, for example, if your registration ID was Kentucky 1234AB, you would put KY space 1234 space AB. Then your decal will always go on the rear side of your boat. So your decal on this side would go right here. Um, these, these letters and numbers need to be at least three inches tall and they also need to be of a contrasting color. So on this boat, a white color would go good against this green to show up well. Also, the registration ID letters and numbers also need to be of a block-like font. So no cursive or anything like that that's hard to read. Um, next, what I would like to talk about is a capacity tag. Um, capacity is a regulation that we have for uh, regulations for people on the boat. So over here on this boat, if you can read it, there is a capacity of four persons on this boat or 550 pounds of people. So you do not want to go over that because your boat will not run correctly in the water. Your boat may set weird and when you get on the throttle it may rear up real high and take on water and cause a safety hazard. So a lot of times out on the lakes we'll see uh, pontoons that are rated for 10 people have 15, 20 people on it. And it causes a safety hazard, and a lot of people just don't know to check that capacity tag. Uh, next, what I want to talk about is some regulations that are while the boat is in motion. Um, this regulation is prohibited riding. This is, uh, for example, on this boat, which is more of a bass type boat, say you would have a pedal stool like with a bass seat on top, you could not sit in that seat while the boat is underway. You cannot sit in a seat that is six inches above the gunnels of the boat. Obviously, that would cause issues for the driver to be able to see, and that would cause issues if the boat was to hit waves or a log in the water and throw you off there and cause another hate, uh, safety hazard. This goes as well as on the outside railing of pontoon boats. You do not want to be on the outside of the railing while the boat is underway or up above on top of the seats on a pontoon boat because if you was to hit a log or wave, it could throw you off create a safety hazard. Uh, next thing I would like to talk about is um, idle speed zones and no wake zones. We get a lot of complaints about idle speed in, on lakes primarily because you'll have a lot of marinas and docks in these idle zones and that's primarily why they are there. Um, boats that may not see the buoys or the signs may speed through there and cause a big wake and these wakes and waves cause the boats at the marinas to bounce up and down hit the docks, cause damage. That's mainly why we get the, the complaints because of the damage. So just make sure that you're idling at an idle speed that is the slowest that you can go to maintain maneuverability. So basically on this boat, if I wanted to idle speed and this throttle was correct, or adjusted correctly, I would put this in gear and you could hear it uh, shift into forwards. If it's adjusted correctly, then you'll idle real slow and cause no wake. If it's not adjusted correctly, all you can do is just look behind you and make sure you're not blowing up any waves. Uh, next thing I'd like to talk about is something that we take very seriously in Kentucky and that is operating under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Um, if you are found guilty of operating al uh, under the influence of alcohol or drugs, you are subject to fines and jail time. Um, it's just not smart to do. It will cause uh, hazards for yourself and others. And that leads me into another question that I get a whole lot from uh, people out on the water. And that is, even if I'm not driving the boat or if I'm just swimming tied up in a cove, 
can I drink alcohol on the water? And the answer to that is no. And that is because the waters of Kentucky are considered public and drinking in public is against the law in Kentucky. Um, some other things I want to move on to besides just this boat that are some different types of vessels that I want to hit on real quick are uh, PWCs or personal watercraft and a lot of people call them jet skis. Um, if you are operating these types of vessels you are required to wear a life jacket at all times as well as the passenger. These vessels also cannot be operated after sunset because they have no lights. So between sunset and sunrise operating jet skis are prohibited. Um, another type of vessel I'd like to talk about is kayaks and canoes. Um, these vessels you do not have to have your life jacket on but you do need to have it very accessible to you in case of an emergency. At night time you can uh, ride these vessels as long as you have a 360 degree white light such as a flashlight or something that would resemble this that is maybe battery powered. This shows other boaters that you are in the area as they approach you. Um, also if a kayaker is uh, 12 years or younger they are required to have their life jacket on. But older than 12 you do not have to have it in the kayak you just need to have it readily accessible. Um, also on the registration part of a kayak if it does have a trolling motor on it it does need to be registered but if it's manually powered by just your hands you do not. That pretty much does it for the um, basic regulations I want to talk about there. If I didn't cover something very well or you guys have anything about covering, just go ahead and ask them. But uh, I would like to move on to uh, some safety aspects of this boat. And before I talk about safety equipment, I'd like to talk about um, how to safely travel with your boat on the way to the water. So I'll hop on over here to this other side. And first thing I like to check before I start traveling is to make sure that my brake lights are plugged into my plug on the truck. Make sure that they work before you go. Also, I like to make sure that my, tow, my safety chains are hooked. You can hook them like this, or a lot of people like to crisscross them. Make sure that my tongue back is all the way down with my safety chain through. Um, as I walk around, I make sure that my boat is on the roller here securely so it's not bouncing up and down as I go across the road. Make sure that my strap is in good condition and hooked up as well. As I walk around the other side of the boat, I got my spare tire here in case I have a blowout. Down here on this side, as I'm walking around, I can check my tire, make sure it's inflated and that doesn't need any air. I can check it with a tire gauge. I walk around over here, make sure that my motor support or motor, motor some people call it. It's probably there so my motor's not bouncing up and down as I go over the bumps over the road. As well as my other safety straps on the back of the boat. Something I like to check as well. Make sure that your motor is actually running before you push it off and it won't start. Because I've been there and it's not a good feeling. So you want to check that. Uh, make sure you also put your plug in the boat before you put it in. That's very important. So now we'll walk around here and uh, talk about some safety equipment that we have on this boat and that are required in Kentucky. Um, first thing we'll talk about is life jackets. Um, I won't go real in depth on the life jackets because there was already a segment earlier last week that went real in depth on life jackets, so I'll just touch some of the basics. Um, you are required to have a life jacket for every person on board the boat at the time. This is a type two life jacket, just for example. Um, you need to make sure that your life jackets are readily accessible. There's four things, readily accessible, that they are in serviceable condition, means they're not rotted or ripped, US Coast Guard approved, they must fit correctly. So if you have three people on board and you have three life jackets, and this life jacket is the three, and all three of them are adults, this will not suffice as the right size life jacket for a child. So make sure you have three adult life jackets in that situation. Also, you have to check to see if these are Coast Guard approved. You just look on the inside, and somewhere right here it will say U.S. Coast Guard approved. Um, here is a work life jacket of mine. This is an inflatable. As you hit the water, it will inflate. Um, like I said earlier, children 12 years or older must wear a life jacket in the open part. 
12 or younger, I'm sorry. 12 or younger, must wear a life jacket at all times while in the open part of a boat while it's underway. Um, boat 16 foot or longer, also must have a type four rollable. This one's kind of a little dirty. It's been under a seat, but this is just a safety device. If somebody's struggling in the water, you can throw it to them. Um, so that pretty much covers the life jackets. Um, if your boat has a petroleum consuming device, such as an outboard motor like this one, or an inboard motor, or even a lantern that has a Coleman fuel or gas or anything like that, you need to have a fire extinguisher. It needs to be in serviceable condition and it needs to be in a readily accessible area. This fire extinguisher has a gauge on it. It's kind of scratched up there, but you can see that it's in the green, so this is a good working fire extinguisher. If it was in the red, it would need replaced. Some fire extinguishers do not have gauges and they have a little white button at the top. If you push this button down and it does not pop back up, it needs replaced. If it does pop back up, it means it has good pressure. It's a serviceable condition. Um, moving on to a signaling device that you're required to have on a boat. On this boat, for example, I have a whistle. You can have a air horn, an electronic horn on the boat up here, or some sort of mouth operated call. So we have this whistle on this boat. Um, next, what you're required to have if you operate your boat at night time is a, a navigation lights. So I have some navigation lights laying here. Um, so if you're operating between sunset and sunrise, you need to have this light right here, which is a 360 degree white light. It would go in the rear of the boat back here. Um, this is for when you're anchored, so that boats can see that you're anchored and that you are in the uh, you are on the water and that they can see you. I keep this on at all times. Some people may take it off, but I keep it on at all times because it's another light for you to see while you're on the water. This light right here is a navigation light for the front. This would go up here in this spot right here, and these act as the uh, traffic lights, so to say, on a on the water. Uh, it's green on this right side and it's red on the left side. And as you're going down the water, other boaters can see it. And it depends or determines who is to stand on the give way vessel. So it basically it shows who should yield and give way to the other. Depends on how you're meeting each other coming down the water. So make sure that you have that while you are driving down the lake above an idle speed, and also at idle speed as well. Um, just a few more things I'd like to touch on safety wise. I can't show you exactly on this boat because this is an outboard, but on an inboard boat you do need to have a back fire flame arrestor. It is a device, circular device that goes on top of a carburetor in the inboard and it stops flames from escaping into the fuel or the uh, engine compartment so that it does not uh, trigger the uh, fuel to burst into flames and cause an explosion. So those are required on every carburetor on the engine if you have more than one. Also back here on um, inboard motors, you will have vents right here. Obviously this one has an outboard so I don't have it, but it will have vents. And make sure that those are clean and clear so that while you're driving, that air can circulate inside your engine compartment and keep the fuel clean and clear out of there so that there's no chance of an explosion from the gas fumes.